Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about romance books that have a married couple in them. So when it comes to married couples and romances, there are a few different sub tropes that can go into there. You have like marriage and trouble romances, uh, marriage and convenience, marriage alliance. So these are just romances where in the majority of the book, the couple is married. I feel like this is just a great dynamic in romance novels. It's one of my favorite parts of romances when the couple is getting married. I I love that. I'm a good I'm a good sucker for for a good marriage trope. Okay, um, so I'm excited to talk about these romance books with y'all today. The first one that I want to mention is a marriage and trouble romance. This is the Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. Thea and Gavin have been married for quite a while. They even have their own house, their own kids. Like they presume to be very happily in love until one day uh, Thea reveals to Gavin that she has been faking a certain aspect, if you know what I mean, faking something their entire relationship. And Gavin is like, what? Like he, he is distraught. He's like, how could I let this happen? Like, how is this even possible? Like, I am so ashamed. And Thea just feels like Gavin is not there for her in every aspect of life, other than that one particular aspect, okay? But there's more to their relationship that she feels like um, is lacking. And she feels like Gavin is not stepping up in certain aspects of their life. And so she tells him that if some things don't change, like, we're, we're basically done. Like, I can't deal with this anymore. So Gavin ends up getting the help from his friends that are in the Bromance Book Club to help him woo his wife again. The Bromance Book Club is a book club put together by these guys that are all friends and they read romance novels to help learn more about women and hopefully woo them and just get to know them more by reading romance novels. Like, I think that I think this series is really cute and really sweet. I've read book one and book four. I need to go back and read um, the other books in the series, but I really loved this one. This is a really good marriage and trouble romance. There's also parts of this book that where you read like the chunk of the historical romance book that the book club is reading. And it's very similar to what Gavin and Thea are going through, like this marriage and crisis situation. I just found out that Lissica Adams is actually gonna be publishing that historical romance book, like all on its own, like that's gonna be its own book, which is so exciting. It's called um, Courting the Countess. And you can like see the book in this back pocket. I think that's so cute. Anyway, um, I really enjoyed this marriage and trouble romance and I need more marriage and trouble romances. Leave your recs in the comments, please. A romance book that all of romance tube just loves is obviously A Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. This one is an arranged marriage romance. <laughs> their families do not get along whatsoever. And so Ada and her brothers realize that Callum and his family are throwing this big gigantic party for one of the daughters of the family. She's having like a birthday party of some sort and they decide to go crash it um but things get a little bit hairy when um Ada accidentally sets fire to the drapes in one of the rooms and almost sets the entire house on fire both families are not happy about the situation and so they figure out a way to make sure everyone gets what they want like to figure out this whole situation without going to war with each other's families and so like okay Callum you're gonna marry Ada and then our families are going to be aligned. Both of them are not happy about this situation at all. Callum is also a little bit older than Ada. There is like an age gap aspect in here. Um, and Ada wants nothing to do with Callum. She does not like him whatsoever. There's even a point where she realizes that he's allergic to strawberries. So what kind of lip gloss does she decide to wear on her wedding day? Strawberry <laughs> lip gloss. So he goes into anaphylactic shock at the altar. But then obviously when they get married, it develops into love. I really adore this one. Um, a lot of Sophie Lark's books have to do with like arranged mafia romance um, marriages and I love that. I just love me a good married couple. Like the dynamic of a married couple is so much more interesting to me than just a couple who's dating. Like, <laughs> you know, like I just love a good marriage instead of just like, I'm just dating somebody. No, give me marriage. Give me forever. Next, I have Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. And this is a marriage alliance, kind of, or marriage of convenience. There we go. That's the right terminology. Marriage convenience romance. So our heroine here is Zenny. She has just found out that her uh, aunt, her great aunt, has passed away and she's devastated. She loved her aunt. However, in the will, she's going to give Zenny a bunch of money, but there's like a stipulation that she has to marry one of her aunt's like friends. His name's Mason. He's the same age as Zenny, but they were friends, you know, in their neighborhood. And so she has to marry Mason in order to get the money. And then Mason also has money in the will. 
will, but he can only get it if he marries Zenny. And so they have to get married and have to stay married for a certain amount of time um, in order to get to the inheritance. And so this is more of a friends to lovers, like acquaintance romance. This one's very sweet, kind of low angst romance if you're into a lower angst. And it was also just so cute. Zenny is so funny and Mason is just so it's such like a teddy bear like cuteness like I love him. This is one of my favorite marriage and convenience romances because like it was fun, it was hot, it was sweet which are the three things that I adore in romance books. Next is a throwback. This is Sweet Filthy Boy by Christina Lauren. This is the first book in the Wild Season series and there are a few books in the series and they're mainly about this group of three girlfriends and three guy friends and they all end up one night in Vegas together. They didn't know each other before this point, but they all end up like bumping into each other one night in Vegas and they're all like blackout, like <laughs> cannot recollect anything from that night, but they all wake up with one of the guys and one of the girls, they all wake up as like different couples and realizing that they all got married in Vegas <laughs> that the night before. So her and Hermia, she realizes that she got married to Ansel, who is a Frenchman. She is like, what is going on? She has like her whole life planned for her basically. Um, but then when this happenstance happens, when she realizes that she's married to this man, she's like, you know what? I feel like this is a great adventure for a moment. So her and Ansel like talk and, and she's like, are you okay with like staying married for a little bit? I want to explore the world. And so he invites her to go to France with him and they live together in Paris for a little bit. And they just explore their relationship. This one is definitely a throwback book. This one came out a while ago and it's a Christina Lauren book that uh, they wrote before their new like traditionally published works that are um, closed door. So if you're wanting the opposite, <laughs> You can pick this series up, but I thought this one was great. I really enjoyed it. It's funny at moments too. The heroine gets like really sick on the airplane and the hero takes care of her for a couple of days and it was just really sweet. I love that caretaking aspect in there, but um, this is a very unique married couple romance, that's for sure. The one alien romance that I have in today's video is The Alien's Mail Order Bride by Ruby Dixon. This one is so good. I need more people to read this one because I really enjoyed it because I love a good like farm planet for alien romances. I love that. So M. Vore in here is our alien hero. And um, you've kind of like read in Ruby's books, like she has like these Masaka aliens, which are like the blue aliens with like giant horns and stuff. Um, he is one of that alien species okay so he runs this farm and he realizes that he's very lonely and he also needs help on this farm he's like you know what how about I just mail order bride another Masaka alien she's gonna be my wife and then she'll also help me around the farm but he's in for shock when he picks up his wife when he realizes like oh this this is not a Masaka this is a, this is a human small human woman her name is Nicola and um she decided to answer the mail order bride ad that Embor put out um and disguise herself as a Masaka um, because that's what he was wanting she realizes that Embor and his whole situation and his farm and his planet and everything will be the perfect place for her and then she ends up falling for Embor. They end up falling for each other. Embor at first is very annoyed <laughs> that Nicola is there. He's like, you can't help me on my farm. You're too small. You're too fragile. Like you can't help me. And so Nicola's like, I can help in other ways. Like I can help take care of your house. I can bake you so many things. I'm an amazing cook. I'm an amazing baker. Like let me make you and bake you a bunch of amazing treats. And so <laughs> Embor like comes in from the farm every day and he's like grumbly and grumpy, but then he like ends up eating all of her treats and it's like, he finds them so yummy, but he's also like, she can't be here. She's not a masaka. She can't help me my farm. But then he reluctantly ends up falling in love with her. I love a good mail order bride romance. Leave more wrecks in the comments, please, because I love them. Um, but this one is just super unique. So I love this one. All of the rest of the romances I'm going to talk about today are historical romances, because I feel like you get a lot of good buried couple romances and historicals. First, I have the Viking Chiefs Marriage Alliance by Lucy Morris. Lucy Morris has this trope in a lot of her books, like um, the couple being married, obviously, because in historical romances, um, like the couple, if they're not married, like it's very forbidden for like people of the different sex to like be together, like alone specifically. So a lot of historicals have a married couple in them where the couple is married for whatever reason, because that's kind of like the only way they can be alone together. Lucy Morris is my favorite Viking romance, historical romance author. If you have not read a good Viking romance, you need to read Lucy Morris's books because she is fantastic. Okay, um, so this is the romance between our hero and heroine and they meet on a shipwreck. The hero ends up saving the heroine from a shipwreck. The, the heroine is the wife or was the wife to a very abusive girl. She is now a widow and right when her husband dies, she decides that she's going to escape their um, like village. 
Um, and so she goes on the boat and there she ends up, it, the boat ends up crashing and then she runs into this guy on the cover. The hero of this book, I can't remember his name. I think it's Thornstein. I think his name's Thor. Um, but he's been hurt by love in the past and he finds this very beautiful rich woman on this boat and immediately doesn't like her because he reminds, she reminds him a lot of his previous love. And so they don't get off on the right foot. They do not get along, but the, uh, main chief of the Viking clan or whatever, um, makes the two of them get married. And so it's about them learning to get to know one another, learning this dynamic of being a married couple. The heroine is very upset at the beginning, obviously, because she has experienced a lot of abuse from men and she is sworn to never get married ever again. And so she's super upset and terrified when she has to get married to this man. But then they get to know each other and she realizes like, this man is everything and would do anything for me. And I love him. So I really enjoyed this one. One that I love that is a fan favorite, the Madness of Lordine McKenzie by Jennifer Ashley. This is the romance between Beth and Ian. I love them. Okay, so Beth in here is a widow um, and she is kind of like being courted by or almost I think even engaged to this one guy in London society. That guy is kind of skeevy. Okay, he's not great. He goes to Ian one day because Ian owns like a bunch of collectible like pottery stuff I think. It kind of like tells Ian like yeah I'm engaged to this woman but don't worry like I have this whole house of women that I'm just gonna escape to every day to like be with instead of her like I don't really care. And so Ian is like what the heck like I have to warn this woman that she's going to marry this dude who does not care about her. And so he goes to the opera I think they're like at the opera he like tells Ian like oh yeah we're going to the opera today. And so he goes to the opera to find this woman her name's Beth and right when he sees her he's like obsessed. <laughs> He's like, that is the woman of my dreams. And so he goes up to Beth and tells her like, hey, just so you know, like the man you're about to marry is not marrying you for the right reasons. Like he only wants your money um, and he's going to go be with all these women. But guess what? I want you. Can you marry me instead? Like I want you really badly and I would never do those things to you. I'm like so into you. I want you. Um, and so Beth is in for a shock. <laughs> She's not expecting that. So the two of them do get married in this book. And that's all I'm going to leave you with. It is so good. They are one of my like top favorite couples of all time. I love Ian and Beth so much. Next I have The Angel and the Highlander by Donna Fletcher. Look at this cover. Can we take a moment please? Oh, they're stunning. This is book number three in the Sinclair Brothers series, by the way. Um, I love this series. Each book is about a different Sinclair brother finding the love of his life. It's a Highlander romance series. Lachlan in here has been tasked by a different like Highland clan leader to go find his daughter named Alice. Alice, our heroine in here, um, she ended up escaping her father's uh, clutches because uh, he wants her to marry somebody she does not want to marry. And so she decides to seek refuge in this abbey where she pretends to be a nun. She renames herself Therese. Her name's Therese in this Abby, like that's her new persona. So Lachlan is trying to find this woman named Alice, but he ends up stumbling upon this woman named Therese and this Abby, and he's like totally entranced by her. And I believe he is supposed to marry Alice as well. And so he's not looking forward to finding Alice because he doesn't want to get married either, but I think they have to be in like a marriage alliance. Alice is finding it very difficult to hide her identity because <laughs> she is she is also Alice. And so there is a large chunk of this book where the two of them are married and like the secret is revealed and everything. But this is one of my favorite in the series. It's one of my favorite historical Highlander romances. So you need to check this one out. I love like nuns being involved in historicals for some reason. And this one does it really well. Next I have The Duke I Tempted by Scarlett Peckham. This is a ruined romance so poppy is a botanist um and she ends up decorating the interior of this ball that um a duchess a duke's sister there a duke's sister is putting on and um she ends up getting in a compromised position with the duke himself and they have to get married and she's not happy about it he's not happy about it that's all i want to leave you with because like there's so much to this romance this one gets very hot and heavy um and there's a lot of secret keeping and hidden identity aspects in here um, but it's really cool i really loved this and the two of them having to like be married adds like a whole other element to like the conflicts that they're going through and it was so cool and the last one that i want to mention is rogues rush in by uh tessa dare and christy caldwell this is a bind up of two different historical romance novellas both of them deal with a married couple the tessa dare novella which is his bride for the taking um is a marriage of convenience story this is the romance between mary and sebastian and mary is standing at the altar to marry this guy that she was like arranged to marry and he never shows up and sebastian is like oh my gosh this mary's gonna be humiliated i can't do this this is my best friend's his 
deceased best friend's little sister and he cannot let this happen to her so he's gonna marry her instead to save her from humiliation when in actuality that was like mary's plan all along because she's been in love with sebastian for forever um and so they have to like deal with the inner workings of being married and then his duchess for a day by christy caldwell is the other novella in this bind up and this one is a marriage in trouble historical so this one's about elizabeth and she's been really trying to forget her husband because he like betrayed her in some way so she decides to pass herself off as a widow she keeps claiming that she's a widow and she I think she's teaching this uh class for girls one day and then um they like know she's a widow and then one day a man walks into the classroom and they're like who are you and he's like I'm here for my wife that's my wife at the front of the room and people are shocked his name is Crispin and he wants his wife back and he's gonna fight tooth and nail to get her back and both of these novellas were really good I really enjoyed them and I just thought both of them were really great in discussing like being married whether it be a newly married couple and a couple on the brink of not being together anymore anyways there you have it those were 10 romance recommendations dealing with a married couple please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me any wedding related emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all